This is John Colo at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you and we're going to do a blend off comparison against two of the highest quality high end commercial blenders that you guys could buy today. Whether you guys own a juice bar or have a restaurant or a smoothie shop you know, and you want to make commercial smoothies and other blended preparations, it's likely you'll be getting one of these two models, which are some of the best ones available in the USA today. Of course, you guys all know the Vitamix brand. Vitamix is making blenders for many years now. This is the Vitamix Quiet one. This is probably the, the quietest a high-end commercial unit with like three peak horsepower that Vitamix offers. And this is a high-end Vitamix with the sound enclosure and we're going to compare that to the new kid on the block. This is the Kuvings CB1000 Auto Commercial Vacuum Blender. And here's the thing guys, the quiet one I respect it highly, right? I've been using Vitamixes for 20 years until I came across vacuum blending and then I basically jumped ship off of Vitamix and went to vacuum blending. Currently, actually I do use this Kuving CB1000 in my personal kitchen. That being said, I was previously using the Vitamix before the vacuum blending came out because in my opinion, vacuum blending basically put every other traditional style blender to shame. That being said, this machine, the Vitamix Quiet One, was originally released in 2010 and I personally do not believe that Vitamix has made any significant major changes in it, right? How many of you guys still use your cell phone that was made in 2010? I mean, maybe most of you guys even have a brand new cell phone. You get one every few years, right? That's how technology can get outdated. That's why I love making videos about the newest kid on the block, the latest technology. The Kuving CB1000 was just released in 2023 March 2023 matter of fact I'll put a link down below to my video where I unveil it to the US market and I do an unboxing of not only the CB1000 which is what I will be demonstrating today but I also show you guys the amazing CB980 which is identical to the CB1000 but it does not have that auto vacuum function that I like so much but for some of you guys, you might not need the vacuum function, and that's where the CB980 comes in. Link down below to that full unboxing comparison video that's going to tell you guys all about the CB1000. So yeah, this is the latest technology, and you know, I'm going to compare these two machines side by side so you guys can see the difference. I'm going to be blending four different recipes, comparing the results. I'll also be going over the warranty length, the uh, cost and some of the other features and specifications of each of the blenders. So now I want to go ahead and start comparing the blenders head to head, side by side. First, we'll talk about what is included with the blenders. Of course, you get the sound enclosure, the blender base and the carafe, which we'll be comparing in a second. Also, you get the instruction manual. And this one looks like a pretty bare bone instruction manual, you know, because uh, Vitamix makes this for the commercial market. It's pretty much a commercial instruction manual, kind of drab. There's no recipes. It's all black and white. So if you're feeling like, you know, you buy it as a home customer, you might be feeling a little bit alienated unless you're a high-end home customer and you know how to do it and what to do and all these things and how to use it, of course. Um, there are 34 programmable preset features that you can program to any of these six buttons, which I do like. Now, over on the Kuvings, you know, this is kind of made for commercial, but also for home, high-end home users. Most home users will not be end, ending up buying this machine. It is for the high-end home user. You get a nice quick start guide that tells you the basics on how to use it. You get a uh, auto vacuum blender instruction book. And then this instruction book, the curious thing is... The Kuvings actually has 35 different built-in programs. So I said the Vitamix has 34. So Kuvings one-upped Vitamix by having one additional program over theirs. But also, more importantly, unlike the Vitamix, that is not easily programmable with your own programs, which there's ways to do that if you contact Vitamix and have a programmer and all these other things. Um, the Kuvings, you can program to your own preset cycles. You could say, 
hey, I want it to blend on high for 10 seconds and drop down to low blending for 15 seconds and then crank it up to high for another 15 and ramp up. So you could actually do that with the Kuvings. Now on the vacuum version, you only have five preset buttons. On the non-vacuum version, the uh, CB980, you have six buttons. Okay, so I do like that about the Kuvings. Now also the Kuvings gives you amazing recipe book. Um, you know, this is a tried and true auto blender for business series recipe book that already has smoothies you could make for your smoothie shop, right? Talks about doing some uh, natural juices, shakes and slushies, nut milk and coffees, and even frozen desserts and how to make them. So whether you guys are a commercial or home user, you're going to benefit from the recipes. I know a lot of Vitamix machines come with recipe books, but definitely it did not come with my quiet one. So, uh, you know, I think that the Kuvings comes with a much better accessory pack that is a lot more, you know, friendly to the end consumer. So the next thing I want to show you guys in this video is the warranty of both these machines. Now, keep in mind, these are commercial machines. Unfortunately, commercial machines have a much shorter warranty than home units do. For that reason, unless you're a high-end home user, right, I recommend most people get a home vacuum blender because it's gonna have a lot longer warranty than these commercial units. That being said, the warranty on these commercial units are exactly the same. Basically, there's a one year warranty on everything except the motor base and the touchpad and all these things, which has a full three year warranty, whether you buy the Vitamix or the Kuvings. So in that case, though, it, like it's the same. So you're gonna have the same exact warranty. The other thing I need to let you know is that of course, the Vitamix is made here in America, potentially using imported parts these days. And then the Kuvings is solely made in South Korea. Moving on to the design of each of the machines. So to me, the design of the Quiet One looks a little bit outdated. I mean, this came out in 2010 and things have gotten a lot nicer since then. I mean, this is also made for commercial use. And you could note, like, it has basically a solid plastic base. Like, to me, this looks cheap, especially when you're paying over $1,000 for a blender. Meanwhile, over on the Kuvings, look at this. This is like nice stainless steel on the bottom here. And then, of course, they have that, uh, you know, nice plastic sand enclosure. Pretty much looks pretty similar to the Vitamix sand enclosure. So you're definitely going to get more of an upscale look with the Kuvings than the Vitamix. Now the on and off switch on the Vitamix is on the on the back, so we'll turn that on. And the on and off switch on the Kuvings also on the back, we'll turn that on. And that one also talks to you too. So it lights up and it says Kuvings and it's ready to go. And this, the Vitamix is lit up, ready to go. I do like the display a bit more on the Kuvings. It's a little bit more, you know, the black background and like basically a whitish lettering. Whereas this is kind of like a white background with the uh, black lettering. That's like more old school, old fashioned, like LED style. This is more like current, okay? So uh, I guess beyond that, let's go ahead and start comparing some of the different parts of each of the machines. All right, first up, we got the sound enclosure. So basically both sound enclosures, curiously enough, have a similar style uh, lid. This appears to be some kind of brushed material that has like, a, you know, you could feel the texture. This is a lot more smooth, actually. Uh, this is, looks like to be like a one-piece unit, and this is actually just, uh, you know, the front-facing uh, stainless with a plastic backing. We could lift this up, lift this up, of course. Actually, the curious thing is the Kuvings uh, a little bit easier to move up than the Vitamix. This, the hinge is a little bit more tight on this, takes a little bit more pressure, and this has a propensity to drop down pretty hard. And, I mean, if you drop this down, it has more of a soft close, right? Then a hard, fast close. Like, if you stick your fingers in there, <laughs> it's going to hurt, man. All right. So once we got those both open, we're going to go ahead and pull out both of the carafes. Now, I will say that the Kuvings has an auto sense carafe. So when you put the carafe on, it makes a noise to let you know that the carafe is in place. When you remove it, it knows there's no carafe in place. So if you try to start the blender up while there's no carafe in place, the blender will not turn on. Meanwhile, on the Vitamix, you could take this off and you could start the blender up without a, you know, carafe on there. 
because there is no built-in safety. So this makes the Kuving CB1000 more safe than the Vitamix in regards to the motor. All right, so comparing both of these carafes, I do like how the Vitamix carafe is clearly measured up to 48, and it's easy to read with a black um, lettering. On the Kuvings, it's a little bit more like, kind of like whitish gray lettering, so it kind of blends in a little bit more. Also marked to 48. Now, you'll notice both these carafe sizes are similar, but this one's a square design, and this one is more of a triangle design. Like, it's rare, I haven't really seen this triangle design before, other than on this Vitamix commercial machine. It's not something regular. That being said, there are many blenders with a standard square style craft out there. So let's go ahead and lift off both these lids. So the lid on the Kuvings has a basically a gasket seal, which is easy to remove, but also provides an airtight fitting. In addition, there's like a little valve on here. So this is having to do with the vacuum part that you could close and you can't add anything in while you're blending. You need to put everything in in advance. Meanwhile, over on the Vitamix, it has more of a, just a soft lid. I definitely will say there's less nooks and crannies in the Vitamix than there is in the Kuvings and this plug is removable so you can add things when blending. This kind of has like a, a few layers to kind of keep it, you know, sealed well. I'm not sure this is going to create an airtight seal. It wasn't designed to do that, but it was designed to key everything inside the carafe. And then uh, going over to each of the carafes, we just kind of tip that down for you guys. You guys could see to the bottom in there. Now, this is a really interesting <laughs> shape. You know, it's kind of like a triangle. It'll be interesting because I've never tried this before. In addition, unlike most Vitamix blenders, this has a propeller style blade. Most of the Vitamix blenders actually have a star blade, not the propeller blade. So that's that's a first. So the Kuvings, interesting enough, also has a propeller style blade. Now these are kind of similar, but you know the Vitamix looks like it has a lot more weight to it. It's a lot more wide, whereas the Kuvings blade is a little bit more narrow. Also the uh, the ends on the Kuvings blade are a lot more aggressive, sticking up, probably meaning it's going to grab things a lot better. And, you know, if, let's see if I try to feel these. I don't know which one's maybe sharper. You know, to me, if I feel these, uh, they're pretty close. I mean, they're, they're pretty close on the sharpness. I'm not going to gauge that. We're going to do testing to see. Let's go ahead and spin the bottoms. So spinning the bottoms of that, spinning the bottoms of this. Yeah, I mean, they both got, you know, basically these are uh, pretty much... Uh, non-user serviceable although they are able to be removed but that being said you should not be removing these because they're not designed to be removed like a traditional home blender is the other thing i will say is that the craft of the kuvings is a lot more heavy it's a lot more stout the plastic is a lot thicker that may help dampen the sand a little bit more than the more thinner wow this is really thin this is thin plastic on here I mean, so thin I can like even flex it. Look at that, I'm flexing it. And if I, I mean, I really can't do that to the Kuvings. This is nice and thick. I mean, I'm gonna say, I mean, it weighs a, a, a fair bit more. So if you like a light carafe, the Vitamix is the way. If you want something more heavy duty and stout, of course, the Kuvings is the way, in my opinion. The other things I wanna point out is that this uh, carafe has basically a flat bottom, which is pretty much normal and standard on all blenders. All blenders pretty much have a standard carafe. You know, the only one that has a non-standard or non-flat craft or asymmetrical, which is not symmetrical because it's like uneven on the bottom of the Kuvings craft, right, is the Kuvings craft. I'm not aware of any other asymmetrical blender. And, you know, there's pros and cons of this. The pro is that because it is asymmetrical, you know, it basically really roughs up how things are going to be impacting and hitting the blade a lot more often. That means you may get better blends because of the asymmetrical bottom that no other blender has, that definitely the Vitamix does not have. Now the con to that, which I've learned, is because it is asymmetrical, things bounce all around a lot more in the blender, <laughs> so things are going to hit the, hit the roof of the blender or the top, and you have to clean a little bit more. So you may have more things stuck on at the top and stuff all around the carafe, whereas you're blending in the Vitamix might be really simple because it just stayed near the bottom and won't glug up and hit the top. So yeah. Once again, each machine 
has her own sets of pros and cons. Now I will say that Vitamix has a nice easy pour spout on here, but at the same time I'm gonna say that the Kuvings actually has four pour spouts because you could use any of these corners and I'd much rather pour out of a corner than a pour spout. Also talking about cleaning, you know, I'm going to have to say basically the Kuvings is a little bit easier to clean with its square design. This has a little bit more triangular, a little bit more nooks and crannies on the bottom to get into. Um, I'd rather clean the Kuvings, especially after, you know, scooping out the stuff on the sides. All right, so that's the Caref. Next, let's go ahead, get into the motor bases themselves. All right, first we're going to start with the Vitamix Quiet One motor base. Basically, you have an, a start and stop button right here. You have a speed control. Uh, to go higher or lower speed and then you have six pre-programmed buttons that have programmed to specific times and specific programs and varying the speeds at different cycles you also have a long pulse and a short pulse on there i believe and then over to the kuvings you have the start stop pretty much like the vitamix then you have the pulse button right here on the Kuvings, you also have the speed control to speed it up and speed it down manually if you want to do a manual blend. Of course, you have the one, two, three, four, and five pre-programmed buttons. You also have this button here, which is for the automatic lid closure. So you could turn that on and that'll activate automatic opening and closing of the sound enclosure. This is a world's first, guys, like no other blender that I'm aware of has this auto open, auto close. It really makes the blender really slick and also helps the cashiers that's making the blended smoothies to know when the blender is done. Say you blend in here, you press this, you press the button, it's going, and maybe you could hear that it stopped, but there's no visual indication other than that it's not moving. Whereas when this is done, it'll stop and a little open up, letting you know that you could just go in there and grab your smoothie and take it and pour it into the customer's cup. Um, and then also you have this final button here, and this is the game-changing button, guys. This is the button that I always have lit up when I am blending because I know the difference vacuum blending can make. This is the world's quickest commercial automatic vacuum blender, right? So you literally enable this button, you press the one of the start buttons, or this quick start button that makes it even simpler, which I'll be using in a little bit. Press the quick start button, the lid will automatically close. The machine will pull a vacuum with uh, several pumps to suck a vacuum, which means it's sucking the excess oxygen out of the carafe. The blender will blend. It'll go. It'll shut off. The lid will open. It'll release the vacuum automatically, and you are done. Super simple, super easy, all automated. All you simply have to do is just load your stuff in the carafe, put it on, slap that quick start button, walk away, take the customer's cash while you're ringing them up, come back, it's been vacuum blended. Now the main difference between vacuum blending and traditional blending, because you've probably never heard of vacuum blending before unless you watch me because I'm the only main guy that promotes vacuum blending in the USA, right? A lot of companies have abandoned vacuum blending because they didn't see the value in it and that's because I believe they didn't do the education to the customers to let them know the value of vacuum blending. So when you vacuum blend, basically it's a simple process. You evacuate the excess oxygen out of the carafe before blending. So now when you're blending and there's that vortex in the middle of the blender, you're not pumping your mixture full of oxygen, which will then cause your mixture to have more dissolved oxygen, which means when you or your customers drink the smoothie or whatever you're blending up, you're, they're going to have more gas belching and blo bloating, right? I'm sure you don't want to give your customers gas belt belching and bloating. They're going to be like, oh, man, every time I go to that smoothie shop, I have so much gas or belching, right? What if you could remove all that, you know, air in the smoothie so that when they drink the smoothie, there's no excess dissolved oxygen than there needs to be, and they don't have that gas belting and belching and bloating. Furthermore, Proven scientific studies show that there are more oxygen-sensitive phytonutrients and nutrients such as vitamin A, vitamin C, and different kinds of polyphenols that are degraded by the oxygen blending in a traditional blender. In addition, you retain more vibrant colors. So instead of tomatoes looking nice and red and vibrant of the lycopene, they're looking more pinkish. And of course, in the Kuvings under vacuum, they're a lot more deep red, which we'll be showing you guys in a little bit. 
Also, vacuum blended mixtures will separate a lot slower, you know, than the traditional blends, which will separate basically from the time you stop blending. And furthermore, most importantly, for those of you guys that have smoothie bars, right, um, you guys could blend something under vacuum, pour it in your customer's cup, say your customer forgets about it for a couple hours, right, and then goes back to drinking it later. It tastes almost as good as when you just made it. Meanwhile, if you made that same recipe in a Vitamix without the vacuum blending, they drink it once they get it. It tastes good. They put it in a cup holder in their car and they drive for, you know, three hours and they come back to drink the last bit of it. They taste it. It tastes horrible. And I know you guys have done this before. That's because the dissolved oxygen in your smoothie, because you didn't remove it like with the vacuum blender, is continually to oxidize the different nutrients and will degrade them and make, kind of make them not taste so good. And, of course, lower the nutrition. So there are many benefits of vacuum blending, whether you're doing it for yourself and your health or whether you're doing it for customers so that you could differentiate your blends, your smoothies, your juice bar, your smoothie shop to have much higher quality you know, juices and smoothies than other companies that are using a traditional blender without the vacuum. So for that reason alone, I would say if you guys are commercial establishment, you definitely want to get the Kuving CD1000 because customers will come back to your shop more than a traditional shop that is not using the vacuum because there is a major taste difference. I didn't mention that the taste also tastes more vibrant, more strong, less muted when vacuum blending because you're not oxidizing all those flavors and you know flavoring pigments and phytochemicals that make up the flavors of the different blends. That's why vacuum blending is a game changer. So with that, I want to show you guys actually what vacuum blending actually does. So the next thing I want to do for you guys is actually show you guys how the vacuum function works on the CB1000, right? On many vacuum blenders, especially the home ones, right, it's very inconvenient to do vacuum blending. Many of them have a separate pump you got to put on there, press a button manually, you, then you got to wait 60 to 90 seconds for it to pull a vacuum. And then you can finally start blending on your own, right? Kuvings CB1000 vacuum blender solves all those issues because it vacuums faster than any other vacuum blender out there that I've seen at this time. And it basically pulls a vacuum, will blend up for you, it'll release the vacuum, and then the lid will raise so that it is all a seamless process done in about as much of the same time as you would during a traditional blend. So it just doesn't make any sense to do traditional blending anymore when there is a better mousetrap. So let's go ahead and demonstrate the power of vacuum blending. So first we're gonna go ahead and hit the automatic open button. And look at that, the unit automatically opens on its own. We're gonna go ahead and then take out the carafe. And we're gonna load this up with something that you may be familiar with, which is marshmallows. We've got a whole bag of marshmallows here. We're just gonna load that up into the Kuving CB1000 Auto 10 vacuum blender. If you guys look, we're maybe up to 48 ounces. So yeah, the, the marshmallows fill about half the carafe. We're gonna set that carafe in place. And in this case, I'm gonna hit pre-program button number four, which is a custom program I made that'll just show it vacuuming without blending. Normally you would hit a button, it would vacuum and then blend. I just want you to show it just vacuuming because I don't want to blend up my, my marshmallows, all right? So watch the carafe carefully after I hit the four button. A couple things are gonna happen. The lid's gonna come down. You're gonna hear the motor come on. It counts down four seconds, five seconds, and look at those marshmallows. They're growing, they're expanding, they're getting bigger. It's up to 89, 90, 92, 96, look at that. The marshmallows have already filled the entire carafe because that's what vacuum does. It basically sucks the pores of the fruits and vegetables open so that when the blade comes around, it's more effective at cutting it. And look at that, it filled up the whole carafe with those marshmallows. This is the power of vacuum blending. It's removing all that excess oxygen that can damage and will damage some of the valuable oxygen sensitive phytonutrients add additional oxygen or dissolved oxygen into your smoothies, reduce the flavor, make it look not as appealing, make it separate more and not last as long. And look at that, man. The marshmallow is still expanded, just waiting in there, you know, for it to do the next task. That being said, what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and release the vacuum. Normally this is done automatically, but 
in sake of this uh, demonstration, I just got to hit the stop button. And I want you guys to listen carefully what happens when I hit the stop button. It releases the vacuum. You guys could see when the mar marshmallows are not under vacuum, right? They shrink down to their original size. Once the vacuum is completely off, then the lid automatically opens up, right? These are all features that the Vitamix does not have. The Vitamix, you have to open your own lid <laughs> and you have to close your own lid and there is no vacuum. To my knowledge, Vitamix does not have any vacuum containers or any kind of way to do vacuum blending in their machine. I don't know what they're thinking of as a company. I could only think that they don't think vacuum blending is a big niche because it at present time it isn't but when more people jump ship on the vacuum blending right then people will realize the benefit because people don't know what vacuum blending is that's the big problem with vacuum blending right now because if people that are health conscious knew about it they would just instantly get it i have converted so many people from traditional blending to vacuum blending and like my friend nate says once you go vac you don't go back because you understand the difference you taste the difference you feel the difference you have less gas and bloating and then you're a convert for life because you're not going to traditionally blend after you know a literally a better mouse trap. So yeah, so here's the original size marshmallows coming right back out, all shrunk back down into their original size. All right, so surely the power of vacuum blending is truly impressive when I do a marshmallow test, but just in a little bit, we'll see how it compares when we do actual real world blending and the differences that you'll get. That being said, I did want to cover a few more specifications about the motor bases themselves. So the power of each of the motors, as I mentioned before, are three horsepower, so that's similar. The RPMs, which is always important to me. The Vitamix can run up to 37,000 RPMs according to the specification sheet. And the Kuvings can run up to 32,000 RPMs according to the specification sheet. That being said, I have tested other home Vitamix models and it with an RPM meter and it really didn't even get up to the you know a specified number of RPM so I wonder if that's actually accurate because that actually is quite fast that being said the faster you run under traditional blending without a vacuum you're basically injecting more air into your mixture <laughs> so while this is only 5,000 less it is also doing it under vacuum where you're not injecting all the air into the mixture to cause that oxidative damage that causes the smoothies to go bad quicker and cause gas and bloating due to the dissolved oxygen in there and swallowing the extra air. All right, so the next test I wanna do for you guys is actually a sound test. I mean, the Vitamix is called the quiet one. The Kuvings, I don't know if they have the word quiet in there, but this guy is awful quiet because it was designed from the ground up to be quiet. <laughs> so. Let's see if the Kuvings is more quiet than the quiet one. So what we have today is a decibel meter. Right, so first step is let's shut the lid <laughs> and let's turn it on. The quiet one was reaching 90 decibels, which, you know, personally doesn't seem too quiet to me. All right, so now let's go ahead and sound check the Kuvings. And let's go ahead and crank it up to 100% there. We're going to go ahead and hit the auto button and just have it automatically uh, close the lid and blend up at high speed. And it even opens a lid when it's done, all right? So here's the thing, guys. The Kuvings was 84 decibels, and the Vitamix was 90, running both at high speed with the sound enclosures down. So which one is more quiet, the quiet one or the Kuvings? So the Kuvings win this is by 6 decibels. So if you're in, like, a front-of-the-house smoothie shop, right, every decibel counts. Of course, the Kuvings is more quiet and also will produce higher-quality blends for you guys and being more quiet at the same time. So yeah, so so far, what do you guys think? Post your comments down below. Would you get a quiet one, or would you get the all new technology, new out for 2023, the commercial auto vacuum blender, 
with vacuum blending. All right, so, so far, I think most of you guys would say, man, that vacuum blender is quite interesting, John. I really love that vacuum feature, but I don't know a lot about it yet. How much more is the Kuvings vacuum blender <laughs> commercial than the quiet one? Well, yes, I mean, for new technology, you're gonna pay more. I mean, try to buy a 2010 iPhone these days, right? You could probably get it for $40 for really cheap, right? But the latest iPhone 14, it's a lot of money, much like the Kuvings, right? It's the high end, brand new for this year, latest technological innovation, the automatic closing, the automatic vacuum, the quick vacuum, right? Superior performance that maybe we'll see in a second or maybe we won't, and it will cost more. That being said, my company name is called Discount Juicers, and I started this company 25 years ago to get you guys the best prices on all the equipment that I offer. So I'm here to offer you guys a 10% off discount on the Kuvings CB1000, which will save you guys $200 off by using the coupon code. We'll throw up right there, DJ10 at KuvingsUSA.com. You guys are going to save $200 and be able to afford the latest technology. Now, of course, Kuvings also has payment plans and time payments, monthly payments available should you guys not be able to just charge it outright to a credit card. All right, so the next part of this demo, we're gonna actually compare blending the same exact items in both machines and show you guys the results. So our first test will be blending approximately nine ounces of celery and nine ounces of water in each blender. Of course, in the Vitamix, we cannot vacuum blend it because there is no such option on any Vitamix blender that I'm aware of at this time, unless you wanna maybe go aftermarket, and then we'll be vacuum blending in the Kuvings. We're both going to be using button number one, which, uh, curiously enough, is programmed for the exact same amount of blend time. So let's go ahead and load up each of the carafes, dump in the water, nine ounces. And now we're going to dump in the celery, nine ounces as well. All right, and here's where it gets fun. We're going to get to blend these up. So the Vitamix, we've got to put the craft on top. Then we have to shut the lid on the Kuvings. Meanwhile, we just have to put the lid on top. We have to just put the craft in place. And there's a quick start button on here. We have it set for auto close and auto vacuum. So we're going to press the quick start on the Kuvings. At the same time, we're going to hit the one button on the Vitamix. One, two, three. The Kuvings just finished. It's letting off the vacuum as you guys could hear it gas out and then the lid will automatically open. Open sesame and it opens. All right on the Vitamix we got to lift that lid open ourselves. What we're going to do today is we'll be pouring both these mixtures into the exact same cup. We'll be using a funnel on top of each cup. Now here's the thing. The blend time was consistent on both machines. They both ran for the exact same amount of time. That being said, the Kuvings did take longer because the, before the Kuvings started blending, it sucked a vacuum on the carafe, which takes about another 15 seconds or so. All right, so let's go ahead. As you guys can see, uh, there's a little bit of stuff on the top of the carafe. And then let's go ahead and undo the Vitamix top. A little bit of stuff on the top of the Vitamix carafe as well. And let's go ahead and pour both mixtures at the same time through to see which machine did a better job. All right, so look at the blends in there, and then we want to look at the pulp. The pulp on here clearly is a lot more kind of whitish green uh, due to the oxidation and the air bubbles. And clearly on the Kuvings, it's a lot more deeper green as well. And if you guys look, even when I, uh, you know, use the sieve to sieve it out, you guys could see the difference in the air bubbles, right? Clearly, the Vitamix, even after going through a sieve that normally removes some of the air bubbles, still had a lot of foam and even separation after we put it through the sieve. Maybe next time I won't be putting it through a sieve for you guys. And then even on the Kuvings, right, there's significantly less air bubbles on the top of this mixture. You guys can't really see the top too well. I'm going to spill these if I, pour, if I tip them too much. But clearly, the whole top of the Vitamix is just all air bubbles. Whereas this, there's maybe a few air bubbles on the side. I think also I want to taste these. 
that's a real nice mixture, really neutral flavor. Let's go ahead and taste this one. Mmm. I'm tasting aerated foam that has an off flavor, and I did use this exact same celery. Air is the enemy to your smoothies, all right? So even when straining, you guys can see the difference. All right, the next test we're going to do is another nine ounces of Roma tomatoes and nine ounces of water in each of the blenders. First, pour in the water. Next, dump in the tomatoes. <laughs> All right, finally, once again, we're just going to go ahead and hit the quick start here and press the button. Oh, we got to close this manually. <laughs> that one will close automatically. Button one and quick start. One, two, three. <laughs> I really love how the Kuvings automatically opens for you. The Vitamix is like, oh wait, I gotta open it again? It's like old fashioned. All right, let's go ahead and take both these mixtures out. Wow, can you guys see the difference in the color of the mixture? And I didn't even pour them out yet. Which one looks more appetizing to you and your customers, right? I personally love the vibrant red color on the Kuvings versus the muted pink color on the Vitamix. Let's go ahead and pour these into the glasses at the same exact time as you guys can see what we're looking at. And look at that guys, it is notably different when I put it in the glass. You guys can see clearly on the top of the Vitamix, it's basically covered in bubbles that are popping. If you guys look inside here, the mixture is actively separating, right? The different particle sizes are separating, there's lots of air bubbles. Meanwhile, over on the Kuving side, it's basically consistent, nice, deep, rich, dark red color. Very few bubbles on top, and it's actually not separating. As I'm sitting here, this is separating. This is pretty much, you know, stagnant. It's, it's pretty much not moving because we have basically consistent particle size without all the oxygen bubbles that are popping, dispersing, causing movement in there. So isn't this interesting? So yeah, we're gonna just set all these aside and I wanna compare these at the end. We'll leave them in the camera shot so you guys can see I'm not doing any funny business. All right, so now we're all set up and ready for our next test. Now we'll be blending nine ounces of water, nine ounces of apples to show you guys the difference, all right? Let's get set up here for the water in both blenders. Let's go ahead and dump the apples in both blenders. All right, we're set up on both blenders. We gotta close the lid on the Vitamix. It's a uh, manual, it's old fashioned. And uh, this time we're gonna go ahead and once again, quick start and button one at the same time on three, one, two, three. All right, we had an interesting happen. I dumped the apples in there, and for some reason, the apples weren't getting hit by the blades until the last five seconds of the blend, whereas it got completely blended up in the Vitamix. So I'm gonna have to chalk one up for Vitamix with the unique shape of the carafe and the, and the design of the blade. It cut everything up, and it's not a fair comparison because the Kuvings did not. So in order to rectify this, the only thing I thought is that we just run it for another cycle so they both still blend the same amount of time. <laughs> so let's do it. All right, so when we re-blended in the Kuvings, because I didn't unset the carafe and reset it, it didn't do the vacuum function the second blend around. So that'll be interesting. So this did one vacuum, one non-vacuum, and this did two rounds of non-vacuum. So let's show you guys what we got here. Wow, that smells good. Let's pour it in. All right, can you guys see the difference? <laughs> the difference is not quite as apparent, but this mixture is a tad bit darker. I wish I would have unset and reset the carafe for the Kuvings the second time. So we're gonna move this to the back and uh, 
see how these progress over time. So now we're up to the last test today and we're gonna basically do nine ounces of oranges and nine ounces of water in each blender. Of course, the Vitamix is not under vacuum and hopefully the Kuvings this time will be under vacuum the complete time. All right, so first let's go ahead and pour the water in, both carafes. Next, let's go ahead and dump the oranges in both carafes. Go ahead and seal up the lids and put them in place. All right, and let's go ahead once again, hit the quick start and hit the one button. Oh, we got to remember to put the Vitamix lid down. I almost forgot I was figuring it's automatic, but it is not. It's manual. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. Open sesame. And the goobings opens up. I really love that a lot, guys. All right, manually open the Vitamix. Let's take both these mixtures out and see what we got here. Wow, that's quite interesting. All right, let's open these lids up and let's pour both mixtures out into the glasses so you guys can see the results, right? All right, easy pour spout on the Vitamix. Corner pour spout on the Kuvings. Wow, look at that difference, guys. Can you see the difference? All right, wow, look at that. So it was approximately the same in amount of ingredients and the Vitamix actually made more. Now, how did it actually make more? Did it make nutrition out of thin air? No, because it added so much oxygen, a lot more bubbles, it basically inflated the mixture. I mean, if you start with this much in a Vitamix, you end with that much because you're adding oxygen to your mixture, all right? So this clearly sees, I mean, look at the blend, guys. I mean, I put the seeds and all in there. There's like large chunks that you guys could see, right? And in the Kuvings, you know, there's, there's a few of the chunks of the seeds, but not as large. In addition, this is a much more homogenous mixture, meaning it blended up a lot better. Look at that. You see all the particles, you see all the flecks, you see the, the little head of foam on there. And yeah, I'm not going to say there's no foam in the Kuvings, but there's like, I don't even know, what is it, like six times less foam? Like there's like that much foam on the Vitamix, and there's like this much foam on the Kuvings. That's clearly a big difference, guys. So let's go ahead and move all these comparisons up front and center so you guys can see what happened over time. All right, so that's what we have right there. These are the differences. All right, number one on the celery. We've done that quite a li little bit ago. And even when I put it through a sieve to remove some of the, you know, the, the, the foam and whatnot, right? There's still a lot of separation and a lot of foam at the top, right? Meanwhile, on the Kuvings, right, that's a fairly consistent you know, uh, mixture, maybe I see two levels of separation, the top level and the bottom level. Whereas on the Vitamix version, I see three levels. I see the top foam, the middle level, and then the bottom level. Much more separation. Also a lot deeper color. The deeper color in this instance, in my personal opinion, is the oxidative damage, turning it more, you know, uh, dark color. Meanwhile, next up on the tomatoes, look at this. The tomatoes from the Kuvings pretty much hasn't changed, and I also will say that probably the flavor hasn't changed from the time I blended it. I cannot say that for the Vitamix, when we look at that, like the whole top two inches of this basically is just foam. If we pour this thick off the top, all the bottom stuff is all like a watery, and this is all the thick liquid stuff, right? So we'd have to actually stir this up to get a nice mixture but if you just drink this off the top, it's like drinking a head of beer, which most of you guys probably wouldn't really like, right? So what are we seeing? We're seeing actually less oxygen, less foam, right? I'll be taste testing these in a minute. It'd be definitely better flavor on the ones that don't have all the air injected. Meanwhile, the apples, they didn't show so well, actually. The reason for that is because I had to blend two times. Of course, this was both times were blended with oxygen and on the Kuvings, the second blend was with oxygen, the first blend was without, and that is due to the way the Kuvings operates. If you do not unset the container or remove it and then put it back in place and you blend a second time, it will not pull a vacuum the second time. 
I've talked to the people at Kuvings to improve this so that you could just re-blend a second time and it'll automatically vacuum blend because, you know, I think it's most people are just going to try to re-blend again and then they're probably going to be upset like I was today that it didn't vacuum a second time. And, you know, this is the results, guys. I'm showing you guys what the real world happens. I'm not trying to make things up. I'm not saying, you know, whatever. I mean, that's what happened. So, I mean, that being said, the Vitamix mixture, if you guys look so carefully, is still several shades darker because it did oxidize more than the Kuvings. You know, I will say also there's a little bit more air bubbles in the Vitamix, but, you know, not by much. So this, this mixture didn't show as much of a difference. That being said, different story on the oranges all together. This is probably, you know, a really major difference, much like the tomatoes. You guys could see clearly the head on the top of the oranges there and the nice, clean, really well-mixed, homogenized mixture without this whole different layering effect that happened on the Vitamix. I think of all these, actually, I'm really interested in trying the orange because I'm quite thirsty. So we're going to try the Kuvings first. Mmm. Not super sweet because I added the water. More importantly, I kind of kept as much white pith on as possible. There's a lot of phytonutrients in the pith. Not quite as sweet as I expected, but uh, definitely a nice texture in my mouth. Let's go ahead and try the Vitamix. Mmm. That's terrible, guys. I'm spitting out like really big chunks. That did not get blended in the Vitamix for some reason. Let me go ahead and retry the Kuvings. Actually, that's an interesting one. So actually on that one, I'm going to put it through a sieve in a minute because I believe there's significantly more pulp that did not get blended in the Vitamix, curiously enough. Another taste test I'll do for you guys right now is a tomato, actually. So the tomato and the Kuvings. Mmm. Excellent, consistent texture. Mild flavor. Let's go ahead and try the Vitamix. Mmm. Once again, guys, I'm getting like big particles of stuff. Maybe like all this, all the thick stuff that didn't get blend well floats up to the top, and the thin stuff, that all the water stuff, floats to the bottom. So that's quite interesting. So, anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and get the sieve test out, and we're gonna go ahead and sieve out the orange juice to see the final results and the last comparison for this video. All right, let's, so let's move some of these guys aside, make a little space, because I want to go ahead and do a sieve test on both these so you guys can see the differences. So you got the same size cups and the same size sieves. All right, first we're going to go ahead and pour the Kuvings juice out, or mixture out. Now we're going to go ahead and pour the Vitamix mixture out. Wow, a lot more particulate into the top and then at the bottom. Wow, there's even still a lot more particulate in the bottom. Wow, look at that. Man, in the bottom of the glass, there's still like junk that did not come out. And in the Kuvings, right, glass is clean. So there's like large particles that I'm going to have to tap out or I can't even tap out. <laughs> Weird. All right, so we got to dig in the bottom of this to get this little pulp stuff out. Look at that. Like all this pulp that basically didn't get blended up. I did not expect this from the top of the line Vitamix quiet one. Wow. All right, so let's go ahead and tap these mixtures down. All right, so we got these done tapped out, and this is quite interesting, guys. Look at that. <laughs> Man, the quiet one left a lot of pulp. How much did the Kuvings leave? Significantly less pulp, so that means the Kuvings blender the blade design with the vacuum was able better able to grind things up to a smaller particle size the vitamix has been unseated you know i always like to think all oh, the vitamix there at the top of the performance game but not compared to the newcomer once again 2010 technology probably barely changed in all those years because vitamix are sitting on their high horse 
thinking, oh yeah, we got the brand name in blenders. We don't got to do nothing to improve. Meanwhile, Co Kuvings is working hard to show that they actually have a better mousetrap. All right, so let's go ahead and weigh these pulps out on the scale. 54 grams is what the Vitamix was not able to blend up in the number one program cycle, which is the top used program cycle on the Vitamix. You press the one button, that's what it does. Same time on the Kuvings for the blend cycle. Of course, it did add 15 seconds for the vacuum cycle and uh, tap that out. Wow, 19 grams of fiber left in the mixture. Guys, this is serious. Wow, I'm really been let down by the quiet one. You know, I also tasted some pulp in the tomatoes, so let's do the same sip test on the tomatoes to see the difference. All right, so first we're gonna go ahead and pour out the Kuvings, and we're gonna also pour out the Vitamix. Wow, a lot more gloopy, guys, in the Vitamix. The Kuvings has a much more consistent pour. You guys that are bartenders know that consistent pours are very important. Uh, meanwhile, in the Vitamix, it came out all as a one big gloop, and then kind of came out more water at the bottom. Even on the bottom of the container there, you see no seeds, nothing. Everything came out in the sieve. And once again, man, Vitamix let me down, guys. The Vitamix left all these little seeds that did not get blended up, right? Vitamix prides itself on, oh yeah, seeds get blended in our blender, right? Okay, maybe they get blended in their blender, but not as good as the Kuvings. Well, maybe there's some seeds in here, so let's go ahead and strain it out. But there's definitely seeds left in here we're going to dig out. All right, so let's go ahead and shake these down. All right, guys, this is quite telling. I got all these shaken down and check it out. Look at that. Vitamix left a bunch of pulp, things that are not ground that can't even go down a, a, a coarse sieve. Meanwhile, the Kuvings had a lot less material that it left. Now, yes, I will say that both blenders left some seeds. That being said, as I'm looking at the seeds, and I don't know if you guys can see the seeds close up on there, but the Vitamix left some large seeds, you know, grinded up some of them. The Kuvings basically looked like it blended up most of the seeds, but into smaller pieces that still did not make it through the sieve. So in this case, neither blender was perfect. That being said, the Kuvings did a much better job Let's weigh the pulps that are left over to find out how much pulp each blender left. All right, so first we will do the Vitamix. 22 grams was unblended in the Vitamix. 22 grams, all right? Let's compare that to the Kuvings. Wow, nine grams of pulp, guys. Literally half as much pulp was unblended due, it, uh, you know, done in one cycle. Now, of course, if you want to blend a second cycle or blend longer, all that would get, you know, pulverized smaller. So there will be less. But, you know, here in the get-go, just using one cycle in the Kuvings could be as good as two cycles in the Vitamix. Are you following me on that? Because basically, to get all this broken down more, you might need another cycle, even more than two cycles at that. Wow. And yeah, of course, you know, we still got lots more foam in this side in the mixture that we did mixing the oranges and the tomatoes and making a big mess here. So yes, this is what we have in the end, guys. You guys clearly saw the difference between these two blenders, right? For some of you guys, the Vitamix might make sense. John, I want to go with the trusted brand that's been making blenders since 19 whatever, 100. You know, Vitamix is making blenders in the USA forever, and yes, this machine is made in the USA. It is older technology. It's made in 2010. It has a unique style craft that's unlike most home Vitamixes that have the star blade that I believe perform better than this propeller blade that Vitamix designed. You know, this machine is less expensive and actually has a three-year motor warranty on the motor, one year on the rest of the parts. That being said, it does traditional blending without the vacuum that adds lots more air that degrades the product that will, that will give your customers gas and bloating, less nutrition and less storability and less flavors. That being said, the Kuvings CB1000 auto vacuum blender, right, does a lot more. It automatically shuts and lifts the lid to let you know it's ready. It automatically will vacuum blend 
adding maybe 15 seconds to your blend time. And when the blend times are the same as the Vitamix, it outperforms the Vitamix, especially when I compared it to the tomatoes as well as the oranges. That was like half as much grit, you know, so the, the Kuvings perform better. It has an uneven asymmetrical bottom. So there's more basically blending action. So things get pushed into the blade more. It, get, it gets blend up a lot better. Of course, it's being done under vacuum. And as you guys saw when I basically expanded the marshmallows, fibers expand under vacuum. So when the blender cuts up expanded fibers, it's cutting it more effectively than in a traditional oxygen environment. Furthermore, there's less air bubbles. There's going to be less gas and bloating for your customers or yourself who are drinking these blends. The flavors will be enhanced and they're going to store a lot longer and not taste as rancid as quickly as a traditional blender would. Now, yes, this machine is more, but of course, I want to save you guys 10% off or $200 off by using coupon code DJ10. Throw it up right there at CoovingsUSA.com. Save you guys $200. So in the end, I want to ask you guys that are watching this to comment down below. What did you think? Which blender would you get, right? And seeing this test, seeing this demo, knowing that this machine came out in 2010, probably hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, and the Kuvings CB1000 vacuum blender came out this year with the latest and greatest innovation and features. And in this, these testing today, Proved to me that it performs better than the Vitamix Quiet One. So for those of you guys that are business owners out there, I want to ask you guys this question. Do you want to lead the pack of all the other smoothie shops and juice bars in your area by using vacuum blending technology so that they have to catch up to you because now people are not going to patronize their shop. They're going to go to your shop because your smoothies look more vibrant. They have less air bubbles. They don't separate as quickly. They could be stored a lot longer, right? Are you going to do that because you are truly an entrepreneur and you embrace change? You embrace the latest technology. You're an early adopter. You want the best and greatest because you want to positively impact your customers Right? And when they get results and feel better, lose weight, and get healthier because they're drinking your vacuum blended smoothies, they're going to you know, patronize your company more. Or the other option is this. You guys could play it safe and you guys could go with a Vitamix, right? Yes, Vitamix, they've been selling blenders forever. They, they have a significant footprint in the commercial blending market. They own it. They've been doing it forever. They do a great job at it but they're not blending as well, right? They're putting more junk in the blender that did not get blended up compared to the Kuvings, right? Twice as much in this test. But you're gonna be safe and stable. It's like investing in some stocks that have been around forever that, you know, a GE or something, you're gonna make a little bit of money. You may not get rich, but it's gonna be a solid investment, right? But then the challenge is, then your competitor is going to find out, find this video and find about vacuum blending, and then they're going to adopt it, then they're going to leave you in the dust. And then what's going to happen? Then you're going to have to play catch up. You're going to have to get rid of your body mixes and then go vacuum blending once other competitors in your area do. So you could play it safe now, play catch up later, or what I recommend to you guys, and when I declare the winner of this, I'm going to declare the winner of this blend off comparison the Kuvings CB1000 it is state of the art blending technology that you guys could own today to reduce the oxygenation to reduce the foam to have better blends to blend up to a funner particle size than the top of the line Vitamix quiet one can so clearly to me the decision is easy you want to go with the Kuvings this machine looks a lot more fancy a lot more better <laughs> due to the stainless steel on the bottom it is easier to use has that one touch design i do hope that kuvings will adjust the programming so that if you should have to reblend a second time like i did on the apples it'll automatically pull a vacuum for you guys instead of defaulting to non-vacuum mode the second time around like i showed in this comparison but even then i'm going to say the kuvings still blended better then the Vitamix, because the I just don't think the Vitamix performed that well in blending as to, as fine of a consistency 
when the pedal was to the metal. So if you guys enjoyed this long demo today and me blending all these different things and explaining my thoughts on these two vacuum blenders, I would encourage you guys to do a few things. Number one, make sure you thumbs this video up and more importantly, share this with other people that would be interested in vacuum blending. Whether you're a high-end home user and want to have commercial quality in your home because you have all the nicest appliances and you have the best and latest and greatest stuff, well, yes, you too want to get the Kuvin vacuum blender so that you guys, you could have the best blender literally in the world at this point from all the ones I've tested because it's the most convenient, blends the easiest, does the best job in the least amount of time. And, you know, it's basically you blend and you walk away and you come back and it's done. It's fully automatic. You could also custom program it. You can't easily do that in the Vitamix. And if you guys want to save 10% off and help me out at the same time, you guys want to make sure you use that coupon code. Throw it up right there. DJ10 at CoovingsUSA.com. Not only will you save $200 off, but share a small commission with me so I could continue to make these impartial videos where I share with you guys the truth about what happens when you blend or juice the same amount of produce in, you know, some of the most high-end juicers and blenders on the market. So I appreciate you guys so much. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out my new and upcoming episodes that come out every five to seven days. You never know what new appliances I'll be testing, unboxing, or comparing against one another so that you guys can benefit from all my testing. Also make sure you click the bells to get notified as my new videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. The past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on this channel dedicated to teach you guys all about the different appliances that will allow you to process fruits and vegetables the best way possible. I'll put a link down below to the original unboxing video of the CB1000 and CB980 so you guys could learn the differences between those commercial vacuum blenders. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.